Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Dr. Donna. Can you believe we are at week 25? Without further ado, check out what I have for you. Last week, I read Last Man Standing for Mr. Jamie Dimon. And can I tell you, I wouldn't want to talk about any of the financial crisis or anything like that, because as you all know, I'm a real leader. And I want to talk about the leadership aspects of this book. There were four takeaways for me. Number one, if you can't say it with the person in the room, don't say it without them in the room. I think that that is so apropos. Today, so many people are so brave on social media and everywhere else, and yet they can't look the person in the eye and tell them what they actually think or how they're feeling or give their perspective. So if you wanna be a chicken, get on the ground and do what chickens do. If you can't tell the person to their face, keep your mouth closed. Number two, leaders should step down when the company is doing bad. They shouldn't be given bonuses and pay raises. How many times have organizations been in trouble, received a bailout, and then all the leaders get bonuses? That is ridiculous. I totally agree with Jamie. No way. The leaders need to step down and step out of the way. Number three, great CEOs spend half their time or majority of their time at 50,000 feet and then the rest of their time, they're down there with the people, understanding how their top level decisions have actually been executed down at the user, customer, and employee level. That's two levels, ladies and gentlemen, for all real leaders. 50,000 feet and then right there on the ground where everything is happening. Number four, I mean, number four is the doozy. It's the one that I believe is the most important. You can still do good and do right at the same time. I'm gonna repeat that. You can still do good and do right at the same time. For all of you real leaders out there, I suggest that you get this book and read it for the leadership component, not necessarily how JP Morgan and Chase were actually able to survive and thrive during the financial crisis from 2008 until 2010. I actually 100% say that this is a book that you should read. Go out and get your copy. That's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. But before I get out of here, just remember, if it's possible for me, then it's possible for you. Watch what we do in 52. I'll see you guys next week. Adios.